Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guest is actually someone that we had on a little while ago, a few months. She started this series at 37 weeks pregnant and I was very excited because I thought maybe, just maybe, it would be our first birth in the studio, but that didn't happen, sadly. But she's back! A few months down the line to let us know how it's going. Montana! Hello! Hi, guys! Oh, my God, I'm so happy to be back. You look so refreshed and amazing. Um, I did put some makeup on for the first time today. <laughs> this is not how I look every day. I mean, it's been, I know it's been quite the journey, and it looks like you're in bed right now, and there's a good reason for this. It's not just postpartum-ness. You've actually had your knee surgery that you talked to us about. Yes, I had my knee surgery two and a half weeks ago. Um, so when Jude was only three months, just because I thought, do you know what? I need to get it done before he starts crawling, rolling, all of that stuff. So I, yeah, I made the decision to get it done a couple of weeks ago. Oh God, how's it been? It's been hard, but I, I not actually with the baby stuff because you know, as you know, they're not very mobile. Yeah. So they're just kind of you put them there and they stay there <laughs> at this point. So it's really good. It's really been quite helpful, but. Apart from that, it's been okay. It's been a bit tough. Just be- I didn't realise the pain. I thought, I've done childbirth. I mean, what could it have on childbirth? How long does it look like your recovery is going to be? It take. So I thought I'd be like up on my feet within two weeks. I was like, oh, I'll be fine. Um, and actually, I'm probably going to be in crutches for another four weeks. Okay. Which is it's which is hard because I need a lot of support more because of Jude because I can't pick him up and move with him obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it has been a bit tricky, but I'm just really thankful that I've got my mum and my other half just to help me, help me with him at home. Oh, bless you. So let's yeah. rewind to 37 let's weeks. Let's rewind. Let's rewind to where we were. Um, you, uh, were very excited to give birth. I've listened back to the episode and I had, <laughs> I had the biggest grin on my face while I was listening. Like, and obviously it was the first episode that we'd ever done with someone who was expecting. Um, yeah. And, yeah, you just were so excited about it. We were talking about your doula, um, talking about how you'd like to give birth birth at home because you didn't want, you know, you didn't know if you could have that privacy within the NHS. Um, Yeah. You were waiting for Mark to step up a little bit (laughs) in some (laughs) capacity. Uh, And also you had no things. You had the baby cot, you had the crib. Uh, I think you had a few (laughs) nappies maybe and some baby crib, but that was all that you had. And you were like, I'm going to start maybe looking at the pram and things. Um, (laughs) But from that point, what what happened? What happened? How 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 did the last little bit of your pregnancy go? Um, do you know what? It's it kind of we we were still pretty chilled about the pram thing. We were like, well, do we need a pram instantly? And um, we did actually manage to put up a pram. I do. Yeah, we did. Jude um, was here was, by then because you posted a photo. <laughs> that was clearly with baby, and there's Mark in the background trying to put the pram together. <laughs> I'm like, okay, they yeah, did wait. <laughs> We did wait until the end. But it was it was huge. Should I tell you why? It was so much bigger than I thought. And I just... Do you know what? I really didn't consider the size of a pram. I just thought, oh, all the prams are the same. And, you know, just, you know, Google, yeah, that seems good. And, I like, we ordered one. It was so huge. I was like, I can't have this up in the house whilst, you know, it, it was blocking the hallway. Yeah. I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to put that up when the baby comes. Um, but everything else pretty much stayed as it was. Very chill. I was like, nappies, wipes... That's all we really need, surely. Um, and yeah, like, I, I just wasn't worried. Yeah. I just thought, this baby's got a roof over its head. It's got a house, you know, it's got a bedroom. It's got us. Like, what more can it really need? I feel like Mark being so chilled has really rubbed off on you as well. <laughs> yeah, it really did, actually. And it was, I actually really enjoyed that time. And I think because he wasn't stressed, I also wasn't that stressed. And I did feel like really calm, yeah. which is weird. Like and like we kind of discussed last time, I really was excited. I was on it was like Christmas for me. I was like, oh, it's gonna happen. I felt so mentally prepared, and I was constantly reading like this doula deck, and I was just like, I know it's gonna happen soon. When is it gonna happen? I want to meet my baby, and I was just really trying to get myself in the mindset of hurry up, I'm ready. <laughs> is the doula deck kind of like positive affirmations and things? 
Yeah, exactly. So it's got kind of three sections of the deck. So you've got pregnancy. So there's kind of a list of and there's different affirmations you can say whilst you're pregnant, Mm -hmm. which I did. And then there's ones for birth as well. So um, you can practice the affirmations like when you're in labor. So I was kind of reading over those refreshing my memory over kind of what things I can be saying to myself, like during my labor and things like that. Yeah. So I felt like I was like kind of rehearsing for the big day. (laughs) I was like rehearsing. I was just like trying to remember all the affirmations I needed. Um, So actually when the day came, I just felt so prepared. And how, because it is like Christmas, but the the problem is with it is that you don't have a Christmas Eve. Do you know what I mean? So you don't know, you go to bed on Christmas Eve and you wake up on Christmas Day knowing that Father Christmas has been. Like that's that's how it goes. But with this, (laughs) you, you don't know what your eve is going to be and you don't know and, and and also things start twinging you can read into things yeah and you know what's so weird so the day before I actually went into labor I don't know why but I was like I want to get a wax I was like out of all the things that I really <laughs> want to do I know I need to have a wax and throughout my whole pregnancy I was like nah I was like oh natural I can be hairy this is my time <laughs> I'm a cave woman kind of thing. <laughs> and then the day, and then literally the day before, not knowing it was the day before, I was like, no, I need to get a wax. I'm, I, I, I'm going to feel better if I get a wax. So I literally went to get my foof waxed <laughs> literally the day before. Just your foof? And I, <laughs> just my foof. <laughs> nothing else. Hairy armpits, hairy legs, hairy everything else. <laughs> but, and literally the... That morning of, I then went into labour and I was like, maybe that was what put me into labour. It was so much more painful. The so final what, if you're nesting of getting mode. It done. The final nesting mode is sorting out your bush. Who knew? Literally. <laughs> literally, it didn't have half of my baby stuff, but thought that was a priority to get my bush waxed. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then I was like, I'm sure that sent me into labour, maybe, but I don't know. That's amazing. How far were you? Had you gone over 40? Did you do that? Do you do no. date? <laughs> so I I was 38 plus four. Yeah, so early. So not actually that not actually that long after no. I came on the podcast. Oh, we were so close. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just like eleven days out. That's unfair, actually. Yeah, I know. That actually would have been quite the story. It would have been. It would have been. And so how did you feel? Like what were those early like twinges and feelings that made you go, oh, this might be it? And did you believe that it was so, it when it was happening? So after I got my bush waxed, I then, that morning, or the morning after, sorry, I woke up at about seven o'clock and I was like needing the toilet. So I got up and then I just had kind of like a little trickle, Mm -hmm. which I thought was we actually. I thought, oh my God, I've wet myself. I was like, that's unlike me. I haven't done that my whole pregnancy. And then I kind of ignored it, went to the toilet, went for a wee. And then when I came back, I honestly nearly slipped over in the water and I was thinking... That seems like a lot, actually, because I felt I thought it was a trickle, but actually I literally nearly slipped over in it. Yeah. And so I said, Mark, I was like, I can't work out if I've wet myself or like my waters have broken. And he kind of rolled over and was like, I think you've just wet yourself. Like I think you'd know. <laughs> and then he just like went back to sleep. And I was just like, that's rude. Also, I Underwhelming. think you know if you wet yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's so hard because I had the same thing. And I wonder how Did many you? people's pregnancy, like, like, but labour starts like that, where you're kind of a bit like, have I wet myself? Is this? Yeah. Because we're all waiting for the big gush that you see in the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was, yeah, so I was really confused, but I thought, just in case, I'm going to do a practice run. This could be my dress rehearsal. So I went downstairs. I was on, I was so excited. I went downstairs and I remember my doula saying, make sure you eat something because like you won't feel like eating as you progress. And also so many people have told me, you know, First time babies, they take ages. You could be in early labour for like a day. And I was thinking, I've got time. I might book a cinema ticket. <laughs> I'm going to go back. So, so I went downstairs, made myself some breakfast, had a cup of tea, was bouncing on my bouncy ball. And I was just reading my birth um, affirmations. And I was like, okay, I've got this. And then genuinely, I was just kind of flicking on my phone, just like, okay, like, what do I want to do today? Like, how do I want to carve out, like, just in case this is, you know, the day of birth. Within genuinely an hour... So maybe like by eight o'clock, I was having such intense contractions. um, And by 7.30, so literally maybe like an hour and a half after like I've wet myself, um, I was having three contractions in 10 minutes lasting over a minute along. Oh, my God. And I, Yeah, I know. So I was like, I said to Mark, I said, I don't think this is normal. I was like, I don't know what's happening, but... I genuinely feel like this baby's like coming very quickly. How strong did and those contractions feel? Obviously, 
by that point, you have nothing to compare it to. So forgetting what comes later, in that first <laughs> yeah. bit, how how strong, that? how did that, did you feel like this is it? And so this I, is what it's going to be like. So I kind of knew because when I was bouncing on my board, reading my affirmations, I was having kind of like period pains. And I was yeah. like, okay, this is really manageable. Um, but then within half an hour, I couldn't actually talk through my contractions. Whoa. So I was like mooing like a cow. Like I, I can't explain like anything else. I was really mooing. And I remember saying to Mark, I need my TENS machine. So he got my TENS machine, but I, I couldn't speak. Like at 8.30, I could not speak through my contractions. I, so I was bouncing my bouncy ball. I remember I was like, turn all the lights off. I had my dog with me. And I was just mooing. I was like, two long moves and I'm through my contraction. So that was what I had in my head. And again, I was like, you know, my, I'm one step closer to my baby. I was like saying all these affirmations. My eyes were closed the whole of my labor, by the way. That's a different story. <laughs> um, but the pain was really ramping up. And obviously, because I'd opted for a home birth, Mark was like, shall I like call the, the, the birth centre? And I was like, yes. I was like, yes, this baby is coming. Um, and obviously they didn't think I was in established labour at all or like they didn't think yeah. that I was anywhere near because they were thinking first time mum, probably not. Um, and in my head also, I was kind of second guessing, maybe I can't do this home birth because I'm like in so much pain. It's only been like an hour and I'm thinking, oh my God, have I got a day of like three contractions this. under 10 yeah. minutes? Um and then when the midwife came to the house, this was about 10.30, she asked to um, examine me and I just said no. I said, And I felt really empowered with that no um, yeah. because it was a lot about what I'd spoken about with Mark and also my doula about what does that mean for someone in labour if you're told you're only two centimetres or three centimetres? It's, it's just demoralising. Mm. Um, and I just... I felt really comfortable, even though the contractions, you know, I was breathing through them and they were, you know, they were painful. I really felt under control. Yeah. And I felt like I was really like my, my body just knew what it was doing. I felt really kind of calm. I wasn't panicked. And I just thought I'd, I just don't want to, I don't want to be examined. So I wasn't examined. Also, if did... you knew that maybe that could have wobbled things a bit. Do not, and it's all about what you feel is right for you in that moment. Exactly. And I felt like if she was like, oh, yeah, you know, you're only one centimetre, I think I just would have been like, I hate you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Was your doula here by this point? Yeah, so Mark had called my doula. I mean, I was honestly, I had no idea what was going on. I don't know if you had this, but I had no idea where I was. Like, it wouldn't even have even mattered where I was because I was, I had my eyes closed the whole time. I just wouldn't look up. Um, because I was just so like into myself and I was just really in this like really special place of like, I just, my body was like on autopilot. It was really special. Um, so the midwife actually took my blood pressure and she also took a urine sample. So I had protein in my urine and I had, um, really high blood pressure. Right. And so she was basically insinuating that I could have preeclampsia. And so she was like, I would go to hospital and I was like, oh my God, no. I was like, I really don't want to go to hospital. I was like, after all this. Um, and she was like, look, do you know what? She was like, I think you're in really early labour right now. And she, I remember she kept talking to me as I was having these contractions. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> she keeps talking to me. I can't concentrate. Um, so, and then she just said, look, you can pop there. You know, you've got time to go back, go to the hospital and come back, I think. I think you're really early. And I just remember thinking like, this baby is so close. I can feel it. Um, so we got in the car went to the hospital, um, went to triage, and I was having contractions on the way. So I was that, I felt like I was watching myself on One Born Every Minute when you see, like, the pregnant lady coming through the aisles and they're having a contraction, like, ah! like in the hallway. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> and I was. And I had my pillow, and I just remember, I kept putting my pillow on the side of the wall and put my face in it and going, ah! like this with my contractions. And there were so many people. I just thought, people must have thought I was crazy. Um... But, but it's get... fascinating, though, that in those moments, like, all of your inhibitions and stuff goes. Oh, I like, did I not I can remember care. feeling like I'm going to keep my nighty on or whatever, <laughs> and then you're in labour and you're just like, sod it, I <laughs> am <laughs> naked, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's funny, though, where you're, it's just that animalistic yeah. side of it, where that side just sort of shuts off. Yeah, you just don't care, do you? You don't yeah. care at all. Um, so I got to triage, had the blood test, and they were like, you know, and by the time I got to triage, it was about midday. Um... And they were like, they took my bloods. They were like, it'll be about an hour. And I was like, 
I was like, guys, I can't last an hour. And I remember, this is what's funny, because you remember last time I was saying how I really wanted Mark to like advocate for me, wanted him to step <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. I had my eyes closed and I was obviously breathing through my contractions and I could hear him having a conversation with the midwife being like, yeah, you know, I think she really wants to go home. Like, she, we need to have a home birth because that's really what she wants. And, she, and the midwife was kind of saying, no, like, I want her to go to the labour ward or at least the birth centre. And in my head... I, there was no way in hell I could have made it home because this baby oh, really? was like genuinely, I was like, this baby's like, I could just feel it coming out. My body was like involuntary pushing. Yeah. Um, and um, I just remember my eyes were closed and I could hear Mark, you know, she really wants a home birth. We really need to go home. We need to pop home right now. And I literally turned to her and went, shut the fuck up! I'm at home birth! I was like, we're not having a home birth, okay? Don't mention it again! And literally, and literally he was like, Oh my gosh. And it was the first time I ever like actually shouted at him in my whole labour. Because I was losing, I completely lost Where's it. Mark? He's like, I'm finally doing what she wants. I'm stepping up, I'm advocating. Don't worry, babe, I've got this. <laughs> literally. Because it was the first time I'd opened my eyes, like literally since we got home. So I think he was so shocked. And like, it makes me laugh so much because I was literally just on him the whole time throughout my third trimester. You have to advocate for me. Okay, I, I want a home birth. Okay, don't forget, don't forget to stand up for me. And then literally the one time he's doing it, I just like absolutely lost it. I mean, it was funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, within like two hours, they had me down in the birth centre and bada boom, bada bing. Jude was there. We're not going to do a bada bing, bada bing, whatever. No, <laughs> no. Did it, so from that, did it keep getting stronger? Did your doula stay with you the whole time? Yes, my doula stayed with me the whole time. And actually it was a real godsend that she was there because that transition from home to hospital which yeah. I don't think Mark had processed could be, could actually happen or would happen. He was obviously flapping, thinking, oh my God, I don't even know where the birth bag is. What's it? What do I need in the birth bag? What do I need to bring with me? And I think the doula really gave him the confidence to be like, right, it's okay. We're going to blow up the pool as well, because if, if we are able to come back, we want to be able to, for her to jump in the pool. So we're going to blow that up. You're going to do that. Okay, and then we're going to order some stuff from Waitrose. You know, we're going to, you know, get some mango, some fruit, some raspberries, some honey, some sweet things that she can have. And I think it just really helped him be yeah. a massive support to me. He was amazing on the day. And I think a big part of that was because he felt really confident in what he was doing. Yeah. And, you know, the doula was showing him, um, you know, I can't remember what it's called, but the anti-pressure points, you know, where they kind of push your hips in. I can't oh, yeah. remember what it's called, um, but loads of different things like that. And I think she just really calmed him. And I didn't even realise she was there. And that was the beauty of it. I think when people mm. think, oh, I don't think I want a doula. I think it's going to be too overcrowded. Um, it was really nice because I didn't know this until afterwards, but the the midwives were in, insisting that I was going to go on the labour ward. And M, my doula, knew that I really didn't want to go on the labour ward. I birth centre all the way. And so it was M that kind of said to Mark, you know, she's fine. She's not got preeclampsia. You can push for her to go to the birth centre because you know that's what she really wants. And, you know, yeah. that's a good thing to do. So that gave Mark confidence to be like, actually, no, she doesn't want to go to the labour ward. She's going to the birth centre. And then that's exactly where I ended up. Yeah. So um, having the doula there was incredible. She took so many photos. Like, we have so many lovely memories of, like, through yeah. our birth. And I didn't even notice she was there. She just came in and Does really... it feel weird looking back at those photos? Oh, I, I I cry looking back at these pictures because they're just so beautiful. Just Aww. and I, and it's just every moment, and it's really sweet because I just see like how supportive Mark was. Obviously, I knew he was there, and I knew that he was. You know, he was. I could not have done it without him, for, like by any yeah. stretch. But it was just the photos are just incredible, just capturing every single moment of of him just being so supportive, and it was just such a magical moment. And yeah, it was amazing. I love that. Mentally yeah. for you, how was that transition for knowing that you wanted it to be at home, but actually now you're giving birth in the birthing suite? I think, do you know what? At the time, I just couldn't care less because yeah. I just thought this is my path now. I'm at the hospital. I'm going to the birth centre. And I think if I was on the labour ward, I think that would have not been what I wanted. Yeah. But the birth centre was like a ghost town. There was no one there. Um, really? Yeah, honestly, it was completely empty. My birth room was so beautiful, had all these twinkly lights everywhere. The midwives were incredible. Um, and yeah, that unfortunately, I, I couldn't give birth at home. But I, you know, I have absolutely zero regrets. I'm, I'm glad I went in and checked that I didn't have preeclampsia. But I would really like to have a home birth in the future. 
Yeah. So the thing is, I think if you can mentally in that moment kind of go, this is what the situation is, then that's, I, that's I great. Just knew, I just knew I wasn't going to make it. I mean, I really... Oh, yeah. I, 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 oh no. Who's, that's my mum's phone. Let me turn that off. Um, I think I just knew in, in that moment that I, I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you have had a similar feeling of, like, you just... My, it was so weird. I, I, I didn't know, and I've never heard of this happening, but my body was like, my, I was having involuntary pushing. Second, second birth for me was like that. It, I did nothing. I, yeah. I was there for the ride. I had five of those intense pushes because I got to hospital. I literally, it, the journey in, I could hardly sit down on the seat of the car. I felt like it was so, that so much pressure down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could hardly walk to the hospital from the car got in and they wanted to examine me and they said I was six to seven centimetres. I was like, okay. Went to the toilet and while I was in there, they, I felt that like whoosh yeah, sensation yeah, yeah. of something pushing. It was like, that's weird. Came out and she was like, and the midwife was like, oh, don't worry about it. Just get in the pool. And I was like, okay. Honestly, and then four more of those, I felt everything. I felt him going down, like going down. I felt the what the, um, uh, my, uh, I was going to say my bladder bursting, not that, <laughs> the, my water's breaking. Like I felt everything and he was just there. Absolutely I, bonkers. Yeah, and I think if it's one thing that like the whole journey's taught me is that you know your body the most and you're so yeah. in tune with your body. Like, and I think a lot of the time, obviously midwives do it all day, every day. And like the majority of people do have a longer birth for their first. And the majority of people, you know, they don't escalate that quickly and they don't kind of, um, they don't escalate as quickly as normally as like a second or a third, but you can be the anomaly because yeah. I rem you absolutely can be. And just like you said, you know, the midwife kind of thought you were six centimetres Literally one loo visit. <laughs> yeah, one and loo I visit. And I came home during that time. I went to the loo, and I obviously did a wee, and then whilst I was mid, like, uh, the contractions had passed, so it was a moment of calm, I was actually looking in the mirror, pulling out grey hairs. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I was, like, totally fine. And then there was this big thing that happened, and I was like, this is a massive, that's a shift. Big yeah, shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was, he was definitely on his way. Oh. It, it, yeah. was such, it was such a magical moment. And do you know what, I... I remember my, you know, they say you have like a transitional phase. Yeah. Where I think it's like in caveman, it's like you're, when you get to like eight or nine centimetres maybe, and it's like your fight or flight, where it gives you that mm. opportunity, that window to like run away if you need to, if there's danger. And, uh, you, you know, every kind of woman goes through it where you're like, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Okay, I can't. <laughs> and I remember having that moment um, so clearly because you're just exhausted. I just remember, and yeah. it was the end of June. I was sweating so much. It was so hot. Um, and then literally within 45 minutes of me saying, I can't do it. He was, he was, he was with us, but I will never forget the ring of fire. Do you know what I'm talking oh. about? Have you ever given birth? Not in a pool. Yes. Yes. I that have. ring of fire. I was like, oh, I don't want to push. I was like, I don't want to push. And it's like when you've got a really big poo and you know you need to get it out. The yeah, only yeah. way is out. I know. And I just remember feeling it for the first time, that burn. And I've been warned Oof. about the ring of fire multiple times. And I remember looking yeah. at my woman and I was like, and she's like, don't, she's like, don't, don't suck it in. She's like, you need to push through it. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, I can't. <laughs> Like, the only way of getting rid of the ring of fire is to push out. the baby out. And she, and she was like, do you know what? She was like, you can do this. She was like, I know it hurts. She was like, I know this is a, there's a burning, but you've got to do it. She's got to push through it. And I was thinking, oh my God. I was like, I'm going to, I just, and it was such a horrible feeling of like burning. And I just thought, do you know what? The sooner I get this done, the better. And I just remember literally pushing tw like two big pushes. I just held my breath and I pushed the first time. Yeah. Pushed the second time. And I'm not even joking. He just flew out. <laughs> not even like the head, the shoulders. I was like, I'm not going through this burning any longer. <clears throat> like this, I just remember pushing it like really, really hard the second time. He literally flew out. Like not the head <laughs> and then the shoulders. And Mark was like, I'm so glad that the midwife's there. I would not have caught him. He would have been on the floor. I was like, yeah, that's why they're there. <laughs> <laughs> and how was he? Because so the, my second who came out super fast, he ended up with, he came out so fast, his eyes were bloodshot from the pressure of coming out so fast for about a month. He looked like a, and his eyes were like a, a, a superhero villain. With like the streaks of red in it. Well, how was he when he came out? Yeah, yeah. 
you know what? It's a real like weird feeling when they come out because they look kind of look like a bit like an alien. Yeah. And the, and it's just there's but there's so much love in the room. Like it really was incredible. Like even the midwives were just so amazing, I have to say. And the fact they do that all day, every day, and, like, they're just so happy. And, like, I just remember the first look that I gave to Mark um, when he first came out, and it's just this incredible moment of just so much love. And that was just magical. And I just remember in that moment, I was like, I want, like, 10,000 kids. I would, just, <laughs> I would do this over and over again, like, just for that moment of, yeah. you know, they come out, and I remember... <laughs> Because I, I was standing up like cowboy saw with one foot up on a step, like on a big step. That, that's how I gave birth, like standing <laughs> up. And Mark was like, what are you doing? I was like, I just have my foot up. I was like, I don't know why. I had my foot up on this weird, like to the side, literally like a cowboy. And like the baby came like flying out and like they gave um, the baby to Mark like underneath me. I think Mark literally shut his pants. He's like, oh, what the? Like this. <laughs> slippery and everything about yeah, that point as well <laughs> and he he like was about to like pull him up and the middle was like no don't pull him too much because that's attached and, she, and he was like oh my gosh he was like, this was terrifying um and then I remember the first time I kind of had him on my chest it was just like amazing and like do you know what J Jude was not like he didn't cry at all like when he was first born he was so calm yeah. and he was just looking at us both in the eye and it was just such a joyful moment and oh, I just, I, I just loved to have that moment a million times. Like, it was just so special and, like, raw. And I just, yeah, it was just such a beautiful moment. And you can see why people want more than one child after having that such a special moment. And it was just, yeah, it was so magical. Yeah. Could you marry him with the pregnancy, if you no, know what I mean? not at all. It was so weird seeing he had a face. I know that sounds bizarre, <laughs> but I was like, I think for the first week, all I said was, I can't believe he came out my vagina. I can't believe he came out my vagina. <laughs> Did you know he came out my vagina? My mum was like, yeah, everyone knows he came out your vagina. You can stop saying it a million. Because I was just in pure <laughs> disbelief that like this actual thing had come out me and my vagina. And I was just in complete shock. He had eyeballs, he's got hair, he's got, a, he's got a face and just all these things. It's just, and that's when I thought, you know what, I'm, because I think afterwards as well, you're like, oh my God, my body looks so weird and, you know, morphed and lots of cellulite. And I was thinking, I actually don't care. Like that first two weeks, I was like, I do not care. Like this was such a special moment. And I think, I remember hearing like Emma Thomas saying like, your body is your vessel. Like it looks yeah. after you and like the things that it's able to do is so special and who cares? Who, who yeah. cares? Who, who cares? But I think, yeah, it, it's so it is really weird seeing you, like a baby for the first time. I think as well in terms of um, they look really blue. Yeah, and his head. The lips was, are massive, and yeah. the balls are massive. Oh my yes. god, his balls were absolutely <laughs> huge. I was like, what's wrong? And they were like, it's really normal. I was like, why is bollocks absolutely humongous? Like it was the weirdest thing. I'd never seen anything like that before. And also his head was such a weird shape. And I remember looking at the middle of him and I'm like, is that normal? And they're like, yeah, yeah, he's just come through the birth canal a bit weird because his head was like, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He looked like a potato. Uh, but, you know, you love them all the same. Yeah. And how were you physically in those moments? Because you, need be, you needed stitches, didn't you? Yeah. And do you know what? At that point, I just did not care. Like, I yeah. was just lying with him. And, I, and to be honest, I kind of thought, in my head briefly that I would need stitches because the way he just flew out, I just thought yeah. that. And also, I mean, something else that we need to address for sure, because I actually, so many people said they didn't even realise this and a lot of my mum friends didn't even realise this. Did you know your vagina stays closed the whole way through until the baby comes out? No. Your vagina stays completely closed. So, like, I had a mirror, so I was, like, pushing. Um, I was, like, Mark was behind me and they had me on this little half-toilet seat. And so I was 10 centimetres dilated and I was pushing, right? And I had caught a glimpse of my vagina. Obviously, it was bald and everything, which was great. I could see everything. <laughs> um, and um, my vagina was completely closed. And I was like, have they been lying to me? So I was like, why is my vagina closed? I was thinking, like, <laughs> like, I thought I was 10 centimetres. And they were like, yeah, no, like, you are 10 centimetres, but that's your cervix. Your cervix is yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. 
And I was, I was there thinking, like, my vagina's going to be, like, gaping open. You'd be able to, like, <laughs> see the... Well, yeah, because I guess there's nothing coming through your vagina at that point. So it is just the bit that's up above. Yeah, but it, it just... It was bizarre to me that it just looks completely normal. Like, obviously, it, like, when you're pushing, like, you kind of can see it's kind of, like, tiny bit, like, bulging. But, like, apart from that, it just looks completely normal, like a normal day. I was like, that is bizarre. <laughs> that was crazy to me. That was... And I remember telling my, um, my sister-in-law, she was like, I didn't know that. She's like, I had no idea. But that is a newsflash for mum, becoming mums. Don't be surprised yeah. if your vagina's closed the whole time throughout labour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't let it put you off. That, that's yeah, exactly. Don't worry. You are, you are in labour and it is coming. <laughs> uh, stitches wise, were, were, how, how were they in, in your recovery? Do you know what? That was actually the worst thing, the stitches. Yeah. And because... Yeah. So I didn't realise, but I, I only had a first degree tear, but my friend had a third degree tear and she said that when she sat down, she couldn't feel her stitches as much. Whereas right. because mine were like really, I mean, literally from the top of my vagina all the way to the back, every time I sat down, oh my gosh, it was agony. I had to sit on a rubber ring. Yeah. Like it was just, and every single time going for a wee, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to go to the toilet, full stop. I was like, I don't want to go for a poo. I don't want to go for a wee. I don't want to have a shower. I don't want to do anything. Like, I don't think I showered for, like, the first, like, three days. Like, they made me shower right after birth. And then I think after that, I was like, I'm not showering. That, like, absolutely kills. Like, the just yeah. it was just too much. And I just was like, no. It's horrible as well because <coughs> it's like they're stitches. You've got to keep them dry and clear. But it's just you also don't know how, like, it's so, how, and how I feel like there's so much you? different advice out there in terms of what you can and you can't do. Like I used, um, I think third time around, or maybe even second time around, uh, spritz for bits. Yeah, I was terrified ex- to use that. Life. Oh, but it's really refreshing. But then Does I also didn't want to get my stitches moist. Uh, I can't remember it stinging. I do feel like it was soothing. Yeah. Um, but I definitely have it. So my first birth, I had an episiotomy, and then the second time round, I had I tore, and I actually thought tearing was almost easier to recover from than the episio- oh, episiotomy. Oh, really? Yeah, because I feel like your tear, that's just what your body wants to do. Whereas when someone has actually cut you, mm. that's not tearing where your body wants to tear in a yeah. way. Um, but the feeling of where they sit and everything, when you're walking around, oh, horrible. knowing that they can almost catch sometimes. No, 100%, because they were catching on that gigantic nappy I was wearing for, like, the first yes. six days. <laughs> and obviously, after yeah. birth, I had no idea how much you bleed. I was yeah. just bleeding everywhere. and I just That's got... the thing, you can't keep it dry. There's, still yeah. like, there's blood down there. Yeah, I know. I was like, how am I keeping it dry? How am I keeping it clean? I was like, yeah. you know what? I don't care right now. I was like, I'm just looking after this little child that I've just birthed. Like, it was, like, the last of my worries. I just remember yeah. what I used to do. I was, like, I used to kind of pat it with a flannel. Yeah. And then, I, and then I'd use a hairdryer. And one of the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the easiest way how to dry On it. your hairless fanny. <laughs> <laughs> on my hairless fanny. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. I was like, oh, my God, this feels so nice. Like, on the cold setting, I was like, this is magic. So that was, That's like, the so best... so good. Yeah, that was the best way. And actually, every single time I had a shower, because they were like, you need to make sure that it's dry. Yeah. I just used to, like, use a hairdryer. It's fantastic. But I, I but remember I, going <clears throat> for poos and having to hold the front. No. So getting yeah, yeah. the tissues holding the front, <laughs> just hoping that it, the poo would come yeah. out easily. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, like, the most awful thing. I remember I now I have, like, this, like, stool because, like, all my friends are like, get a stool, get a poo, poo stool so you can put your feet up. Um, yeah. But I, it was just agony. I just completely... I think that was the one shock for me. It wasn't anything to do with birth. I felt so prepared for birth. But the postpartum thing is just, mm. oh, my God, that is really difficult. And I think I was just, you're just in pain, especially if you've you've torn or you've had a, an episiotomy or, I mean, even just from giving birth, like the pain that you're yeah. in. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't want to wash my hair. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to get out of bed. It, I just... Well, it's like you say, you had that ring of fire. You have literally, whether, you, whether you've, you've done it that way or even a cesarean, you have... <laughs> You know, with that way, you've pushed something out of your fanny, which you know, yes, it, it that's nat- that's natural. That's what you that's what your body's designed for. But you're going to feel the after effects of that. There's going to oh be God, bruising. Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, it's all going to be very swollen. Like, yeah. Oh my and God. And I think we don't talk about that, and we don't. So we're, therefore, there's no focus on it. All of our focus when we're pregnant is on that one day. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I was just in complete. I genuinely was just in complete shock. I didn't realize 
how painful it would be. I didn't realize how emotional I'd be. I didn't realize how many nappies I'd go through. Yeah. I, I, honestly, it was like a murder scene. And I remember because my partner's family were like, oh, you know, we really want to come round. And I was just like, there's blood all over the floor. You can't. Like, <laughs> and, like literally. And because it's not as if I'd like, oh, let me just crouch down and like, let me just grab this and let me just go and clean up. And like, you just, I just didn't have the energy. Like, genuinely, yeah. it looked like someone had been murdered in our bedroom. I was like, I can't have anyone other than my mum like seeing the state of this room right now um <clears throat> and I think I just really leaned into the fact I was like you know what I don't need to be looking good I don't need to smell good I don't need to do anything I can just sit on my own blood and I can just use my hairdryer and I'm sweet <laughs> like I was just like I just didn't care <laughs> how did your tummy feel because uh, for me it was a very odd thing it was like um almost like bread dough yeah, that was exactly what mine was like. It was so weird because because it's it's weird. I can completely see because a lot of my friends who have cesareans um, and who haven't been able to be awake during their cesarean, mm. they often have this kind of whole like, is that my baby kind of feeling? Yeah. And they, I mean, I've, I know so many of um, my friends that have had that experience and be like, it's very weird waking up and having a baby on you yeah. because your mind kind of plays tricks on you because you've not seen it come out of your body. Um, Whereas, like, for me, it really made sense because I thought, oh, this is, like, my little kangaroo pouch. You know, he was in there, like, literally yesterday. Um, and so I can completely actually really understand how hormonally it's really different, maybe, and sometimes yeah. maybe a bit more difficult. Um, but, yeah, it was it was very weird. I was like, God, I've like, got all this spare room because <laughs> it was so tight as well. My belly button looked so weird. It looked like a little, really? mi- mi- it looked like a little mini like penis, like because it hadn't gone like in. I was like, that is awful. Let's hope that goes in. <laughs> like it was like inside out, just like kind of floppy. I was like, ew. Um, but yeah, inside it- out and floppy. <laughs> it was. No one would know that we were talking about your belly button. There. I know. <laughs> but it's the weirdest thing, isn't it? Seeing your body kind of like slowly get back, and like even now, I'm just got so much more cellulite, so much more kind of excess like skin, and you just. I just, think- it's just that body that we are not used to seeing, we're definitely not used to experiencing, no matter how often someone's given birth, how many times they've given birth, that postpartum body, that especially in that first week, that's only really experienced in that week, you know, where your body is, you know, it's it's kind of working out, things are going, you're literally, your organs are moving back into their places, you know. Yeah. Let's not, like, let's not think about abs or anything like that. Your lungs are being able to expand, like, your yeah. tummy's going back to where it should be. Everything is just kind of, swirling around in there finding its place and yeah. I think that's something you only experience during that short window yeah and it's so bizarre no it is really bizarre like it was really bizarre I I, I really found um I don't know not, not that I was sad but I really loved being pregnant I loved my pregnant yeah. belly I feel like people got up all the time to let you sit down and like <laughs> oh you know take a seat you don't move a muscle and I was like that's gonna go now I'm gonna have to do it all myself now <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, I found like the, my milk coming in, all of that process, that to me was like by far the worst, I think. Really? I had lumps coming out of my armpits, like, oh, yeah, which apparently your tissue re- goes all the way. Yeah. And I didn't realize, and it was so painful. I had genuinely had, they looked like golf balls. I couldn't actually put my arm down without being painful. And I just, oh my rem- God. yeah, it was awful. And I was like, something's wrong. I was like, what is happening? I was like, this is agony. Um, and my partner's dad's best friend is a doctor, and he was like, "You like you need to like massage it down. It's just like milk." And I was just thinking, "For yeah. God's sake, anything else?" And like my boobs were already like up here with like all these blue <laughs> veins, and like they were rock hard. And I was thinking, "Oh my God, when is this going to end?" It's also that you go to bed on like night two, and you're like, "Okay, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. This is okay." Like, well, well you're not, but you know, yeah. you kind of know where you are within that forty eight hours. You know, yeah. And then you go to sleep, and something. You wake up and you have these rocks attached to your body. Oh, it's so sore. Oh, yeah. that was so painful. And my poor nipples. Like, I just, <laughs> I remember because my friend, um, my best friend, she was two months behind me um, in pregnancy. So we both got pregnant kind of together. And she was like, so how was it? Like, was it amazing? And I was really careful. I was like, I don't want to, like, tell her how painful my everything is right now. I was like, I don't think that's going to be helpful. So I was like, yeah, it's amazing. I was like, and obviously it is amazing, but like that first two weeks is really hard. Yeah. Mentally. 
And I think mm-hmm. I, I remember getting in the bath, I think on day seven and I could, they were like, look, your stitches are dissolvable. So you, you can only be in the bath for five minutes. And I was like, you know, I'm going to take that five minutes. I remember I was having like Epsom sea salt and lavender baths for five minutes. And that would be my time in the evening. Yeah. That would be like my moment where I really forced myself to be positive because I was in agony. My golf balls under my armpits, my boobs were really sore. My stitch was really sore. And um, I just remember, again, I was really forcing myself to do affirmations. I'm really grateful. I made my, my milk's come in. I'm really grateful for my body. I was just really trying to focus on the gratitude element of it because yeah. I thought all women go through this. It's really important that I actually focus on, like, so many women can't breastfeed or their milk doesn't come in and all of these different things. And I, so I was really, really trying, even though I was in so much pain, to, like, try and be as positive as possible. And that really helped yeah. me because it actually just allowed me like the space to be like, you know what, actually I can do this. I'm grateful for this experience. And like, I've got this, like I can do it. Um, and, and that five minutes kind of every day after, after day seven was really special to me. It was like my really? moment. Yeah. 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 It was like my sacred time. I used to just have a complete, it would, I'd have all the lights off in the bathroom. I'd like light all the candles and I just, I remember it so well, like the smell of like lavender. And I, it was just such a, re- it was a really nice time for me to just kind of, and I'd be crying whilst I was doing my affirmations, by the way. You know, I was really just letting out all of the emotions and just being with, and just sitting with my emotions, but also just being like, you know what, actually, this is, this is amazing. And I want to be present for this. And I, you know, I want to focus on the good in this part, if, even though there's, you know, it's hard, like there are still good yeah. moments. We talk a lot nowadays, I think, about maternal mental health and things like that. Do you feel like you were aware of that that side of stuff and or maybe on the lookout or just putting those things in, in place to kind of keep check of how you were feeling? I think that's exactly why I decided that I needed five minutes because up until those seven days, I felt really overwhelmed. Like I was mm. crying a lot and I just, I felt like I I didn't have... It was weird because I... I'd get really flustered if someone that was with uh, someone other than me was with the baby. I'd be like, oh my God, I want the baby back. Where's he gone? But then like when he was on me, I, I equally felt a little bit claustrophobic when I had him all day. And I was also in bed all day, like not really doing much, not moving. I, I, I also felt kind of like, oh my God, like he's mine. And, you know, he's always going to be here and all of this stuff. It's not like a dog you can return or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they're going to forever be with you. Um, So I had that kind of like, it was yeah it was a, it was a weird moment up until that seven days I just yeah I was very emotional and it's that big life shift though isn't it like and I think when you think about yourself having a baby within that first week so much is happening yeah. and and that's a huge part of it your independence has slipped away that responsibility that's placed on you is absolutely massive and that happens when you are at your most depleted in yeah. every single way physically when you're in pain, when things are, you know, going on, all these different chemicals and hormones are released. It's such a massive thing to go through at a point when you're not at your best. Yeah, no, it's so true. And I I think it's really important for mums to kind of give themselves like so much slack at that time because there's just, like you said, there's so much going on. You're not at your best. You don't feel like like, I just didn't even feel like I couldn't cook myself food. I was just like, I just don't even want to move. Like, I'm in so much pain. Um, but that five minutes just really gave me the headspace to just... Sometimes I'd just cry for the whole five minutes. Sometimes I was really able to just... I used to think of, like, the fav- like my favourite thing of, like, the day. And, like, yeah. obviously, from seven days onwards, like, there's little things, like, their eyes become, like, a different colour. And, mm. like, you know, you get a bit more, like smiles and a bit more emotions and they're awake for l- longer periods and I really was like trying to focus on those small moments of being like that's actually really special and so I'd really try and focus on like the, the positive things because I thought if if I've got any hope of like not kind of having this feeling for a longer period of time I really need to kind of force myself to be positive yeah. um and you know I completely understand a lot of people, mums go through kind of baby blues and that was really kind of what I was, I wasn't sure if I had or not. I was actually not yeah. even sure what it was too much. I just knew that it was something that you had kind of postpartum. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's probably emotional for everybody. Let's talk boobs. Yeah, let's talk We've boobs. We've talked about them getting 
Hard and horrible. Hard and horrible. <laughs> hard and nasty. Hard, yeah. Hard and nasty. Um, but before giving birth, you were, you were quite... Um, you were quite laid back about breastfeeding. You're a bit. I think you're so aware. You are so aware, and you are definitely someone who has really studied. I would say in terms of, and prepped. There's stuff that you can't prep for, like how your body's going to feel, and I don't yeah. think there's enough out there about stuff like that. But with breastfeeding, you were very much sort of. I know that it might not happen. I might know that it might not come easily, but I'm going to try. Yeah, that's where you left us. Yes. So, so. <laughs> I exclusively breastfed until two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what? At the start, I was, oh, it was just so painful. I was like, I can completely see why people throw the towel in. I was like, get me the formula. And I remember I was like, Mark, you need to buy the formula just in case I don't make it this week. <laughs> and I, and he was <laughs> <laughs> like, and I just remember I had so many, so much formula like in the drawers. Cause I was like, next week, next week might be the week that I don't do this anymore. And I just kind of was like, I just took it week by week. And I just, mm. and then it did suddenly get easier. And actually something that made it a lot easier was having a lactation consultant to come see us at five weeks. She told us that Jude was tongue tied. And, and that's why kind of his latch wasn't good. And it was a very shallow latch. And he was literally like on the end of my nipple. Like you can imagine how red raw that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so we actually had his tongue tie um, lasered, which kind of sounds horrible. Um, but it genuinely was the best thing I did because it enabled me to carry on breastfeeding. And it was then honestly instantly pain free. Really? Yeah, it, on, I couldn't believe the difference. And do you know what? It was a very stressful period where it, was, it wasn't nice, you know, having to get it lasered. It wasn't nice having you have to do tongue exercises afterwards to make sure they've got full flexibility of their tongue. So is that you having to hold his tongue and move it around? You've you got, you got to push it back to 90 degrees, like four or five times a day after like post-surgery um so yeah it, it's a it's a big commitment so is that very different to having it cut then having it lasered because with cutting they don't say i don't well i've never heard about it possibly being able to reattach but is that different with laser so this is again i've like kind of got myself in a hole of research Sciz scissors versus laser scissors yeah. is more difficult to be as precise because it's obviously bleeds yeah and so often they'll go in they'll cut it they'll be like well, maybe we need to they kind of clear the wound and they're like oh actually maybe we need to cut it some more so it's not as precise as I've been told um and obviously you're more likely to infection because right. of the nature of the wound is in the mouth and also it's blood yeah. laser is more precise it doesn't bleed because so it cauterizes as it lasers so it doesn't bleed right so it's complete so it's just a completely different ball game ball game and for me I just thought it heals quicker yeah. Um it's less painful for the child to get it lasered. Um less likely to like to be infected, so I just thought I'm just going to get it lasered. Um but I do, I do think again there's not enough information out there about that because I had no idea you could even get it lasered. No. Um and well, I think it's such an old school thing, isn't it? Like Yeah, I just I think you just assume that that is the way you forget. We forget that te technology and medicine advances. Yeah, you know? hundred percent. And also, someone t someone messaged me because I remember putting it on my Instagram, and one of my friends messaged me saying, "Oh my goodness, my son was tongue tied." The nurse came round to my house, and I had to pin my baby down, and they cut it for. And I just thought, how traumatic is that? And like, so how I did you do it then? So we actually had to take Jude to this um, oral surgeon in London. Yeah. Um, they don't let you in the room. They're like, it will literally take two minutes, but we don't like parents to be in the room. We don't want it to be distressing for them. And um, then you can come back in literally five minutes. And we did exactly that. And don't get me wrong, when you leave your baby in that room, I burst into tears. Oh. Five week old Jude, I was just like, oh my God, I'm a terrible person. Oh my God, he's going to be in so much pain. And it literally was two minutes. He came to kind of collect us from downstairs. And by the time we actually got upstairs, he was kind of like calmed down. Yeah. Um, and I think that first day, you know, he was a little bit more grisly. He was crying a bit more. And you know, obviously because he was in pain because he had a lip yeah. tie as well, which is when you've got a bit of skin attached here. Oh, yeah. So they did that as well. Um, but all of these things were contributing to him not being able to breastfeed properly. Um, so after that first day, he his it just wasn't painful breastfeeding. I was just in complete shock. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is amazing. Because <laughs> I just felt like... I can do this now. And at, and actually, I think there's probably so many women that maybe their babies are tongue-tied 
Mm-hmm. And they're not able to breastfeed properly. And it is so painful when they're not latching properly. And those gums are like wooden blocks. Like they are not mm-hmm. soft. Um, so yeah, I think if that's one thing I would... It's I... knowing what pain is normal and what's not, isn't yeah. it as well? Because so I uh, I can remember a mate of mine messaging... I think maybe I'd only just announced that I was pregnant. I don't think I'd said anything about breastfeeding. But she messaged and she just said, you know, the first 15 seconds of each feed in those early days, you know, clench your butt put your feet into your chair. I remember being like, oh, yeah. what is she on about? But it is, it's that burn yeah, like, of that <laughs> milk literally being sucked out of you. I know. But be, if it's still hurting beyond that, it's definitely worth yeah. you know, getting it looked into. I remember the first two, like two weeks especially, Mark would be like, oh, I think he's hungry. I'm like, no, he's not hungry. Sell him some other way. I was like, I need 10 more minutes. I was like, I can't. And I just used to try and like, get him to like walk him around the block I was like soothing for just 10 more minutes like I just need 10 more minutes to myself before I can do that again because it is that toe curling like mm. like it and is I'd just be pain. I'd be so set on my three hour gaps so I'd be like no no <laughs> there's still 45 minutes yeah. 45 <laughs> minutes second... like, no thank you <laughs> <laughs> second and third I was like oh they're grizzly oh just pop them on the boob yeah, you yeah. know it's totally different I know it's a little bit of a whirlwind but yeah I think the whole baby space especially like those those early like weeks because Jude was also projectile vomiting oh yes the dairy thing yeah which I had again no idea because I thought oh this is normal you know he's um you know he babies are sick all the time but he was like projectile like it was yeah it was like hitting the wall projectile like when he was asleep and stuff like it was bad and I just kind of assumed that was normal, which kind of in hindsight, it, it wasn't normal at all. Um, like, honestly, he'd be like in bed lying flat in his little car and I could literally see it like a rainbow. And I was thinking, that's weird. Like, but I just, again, I was like, oh, I was like, I feel like, because he was such a happy baby. He, like, he didn't seem like he was in like pain. Like he just, yeah. he just seemed to kind of be doing, I was like, mm, it doesn't seem like he's like upset about anything. Um but yeah, that was also a bit stressful. And now he's, he's allergic to dairy and I'm just like gutted. I'm like, ugh, no Maltesers, no chocolate, no this. <laughs> it's like just really depressing. Well, Maltesers, your snack of choice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so but again, once that had settled, once you d- decided to cut get dairy out yourself, had that sort of settled things within him? Yes. Yeah, but it compl- honestly, within a day of me not having any dairy... I was having a box Crazy. of Maltesers every day, so that probably didn't help. Like, you know those, you know those gigantic boxes of Maltesers? Yeah. I genuinely ate one of those every day. They're so Moorish, though. It is one of those oh. things, as soon as you know they're open, you're just yeah. going in the cupboard all the time. They might as well just sit next to you. That's I just it. Thought, I, forget, I just give them birth. I can do what I want, okay? I can eat what I want. If I want to eat a box of Maltesers every day, I can do that. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then, so two weeks ago, you've now you've switched to combi feeding. Yes, two weeks ago, since the operation, I just really needed some support. I just didn't want to. Yeah. I just didn't. I didn't have the energy really, and I was in so much pain. Yeah. I just was like, I just need to not think about breastfeeding for the first week. Yeah. So that was the first time we kind of introduced formula, um, and it was a hyper, hypoallergenic one. Um, just because of his dairy intolerance. Yeah. And it's been fine. And do you know what? For that first week, we did combi of um, formula and breast. And now we're back on exclusively breast. And it's absolutely fine. And if I don't fancy it, or if I actually want to go out with the girls, I'm like, you can feed him formula and he'll, he'll survive. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. He absolutely will survive. He loved the formula as well. He loved the formula. He was like, oh, my God, this is, like, amazing. And I was thinking, excuse me, don't enjoy that too much. Um, (laughs) But, um, yeah, it was was good, actually, because he really enjoyed it and he loved it. So, again, that took the pressure off me as well. Yeah. And how are you feeling now? You know, you're a few months in. You know, I know the the knee stuff is kind of, it's going to have changed a lot of, a lot of stuff and... But before that, how, mm. how had you felt that like things starting to to change with with between you both? Um, do you know what? They obviously become way more expressive. They recognise you. They start smiling. Like really magical moments. The one thing that I would say is I hate that app. What's it called? Like Wonder Weeks or something or Wonder yeah, Leaps. Yeah. Some that, people I, love it. I know, and I, and that's mm. the thing. Some people are like get it. It's incredible. I really didn't like it. Jude should be doing this right now. Jude should be doing that. And Jude should be you know 
doing this. And I'm just like, he's not doing any of these things. It's just annoying me that like, I'm like, oh, he should be doing this. So I just deleted it. And that was actually the best thing ever. Just letting him grow into whoever he wants to be at whatever speed that is. And I just feel way more relaxed. So I just kept looking at it being like, oh, he's supposed to be smiling this week. I haven't seen a smile yet. And all this stuff I'm going to be saying to Mark, like, oh my God, maybe he's behind. I'm like, he's two months. He's two months. How can I say he's behind? So I think that really took the stress out of things, actually just deleting that and not Googling everything and just really just enjoying all the moments. And when things come or when things happen, it happens. Yeah. Are you really not Googling anything? Um, Because my Google history in those early <laughs> days, it, it, it's always a bit bonkers. I just Google stuff like when their teeth come in or like when they yeah, start yeah. like crawling and like big stuff like that. Because like at the minute he started like dribbling a lot and I'm like, does this mean his teeth are coming in? Do baby's teeth come in at four months? I like, And that <laughs> I genuinely have no idea. Um, and they can come in as early as four months. So I'm like, please don't yeah. start. Well, they all start there. moving around. I think oh, there's, there's definitely active activity. So you might not see some for a, a couple of months, but the yeah, activity's that's there. why they all start. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about but, breastfeeding when the teeth come in. I think I'm not going to be like. Argh. Well, I always said until six months or when they get teeth. Like that's that was my aim, and then because yeah. it took so long for a, it took me uh, my first like three months for it to actually become comfortable. Like it felt like suddenly one day he went on in a completely different way to what he had before. Suddenly it was working. Uh, and then because it took so long to get there, I was like, mm -hmm. well, let's just keep at it. So I yeah. fed him for just over a year. And then the other two, because, you know, well, you do for one, you've got to yeah, do yeah, for yeah, all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that weird <laughs> mental thing in your brain. Uh, I carried on. But uh, the teeth, only the third one got me with his teeth. The other two, they weren't. They no, as soon well as, behaved. As soon as Jude has teeth, it's not happening. I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> can't, can't possibly. My poor nipples, like they look so weird already. I'm like, no, no, oh. no. No, no. I know, honestly, I can't. Like, that That to me would be a... Set, like, I can't have my, my child bite it. Like, it just... No. Well, but some children don't bite. Or you do the one bite and you're out rule. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Montana. So, if you could write a letter, now that you're, you're uh, a few months in, if you could write a letter on motherhood, who would it be to and what would you say? Do you know what? I was actually thinking about this ahead of speaking to you and I would write a letter to all the single mums and just how much respect, love and just kudos I have to them because when I was in those late stages of labour, I actually thought of my mum because she was a single mum mm. and I thought all those single mums out there who are having children by themselves don't necessarily have like a really close support network. I just salute you like you're absolute super powerhouses. Like it's just incredible and um yeah you know I think about it often single parents Do just don't you? don't have enough support because you know I struggle and I've got a lovely support network around me so I just could like I just send so much love to those single mums and just keep going and yeah it's just incredible what they're doing has it made you think about your own mum a lot and what it would have been like for her then Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've definitely thought of my mum a lot. And, you know, my mum and I have got really, really close over this period of me having Jude, which has been really nice. Because um, you just have so much respect, I think, for your mum once you've gone through that. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes you feel bad for all the time. Yeah, it does. It's been the right shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wish I wasn't horrible to you. Like when I was 13. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's lovely, though. I love that. And it seems like she's been a real... No, she's Keep been amazing. She's really, really stepped up. She's helped me when it's been really, like, hard, especially in those first two weeks. She was kind of driving and being there at 6.30 a.m., knowing I wouldn't have had any sleep. She's like, I'll take the baby until 11, you have a sleep. So she was really super, superhuman for me. I love that. So we're going to finish three sentences. First one, being a mum means... Being a mum means... Oh, that's hard. Being a mum means showing up emotionally. Since having a child, I... Don't put myself first. And I'm happy when... I'm with my baby. 
Montana, I'm so, so, so glad that we could get this chat in. I know. It's been an absolute joy. I've loved it. And also it's something really special about speaking to someone before their journey, of, of before their birth and then afterwards and kind of... It's it's been just so gorgeous. And we can yeah. do this next year. We'll do like a yeah. yearly roundup. I know. It won't be too long before I'm trying again. So I'll be back. <laughs> do you think do you feel like you're ready like not ready now, obviously, but do you reckon you're you that's that's yeah. what I'm like, yeah. I, I want another one already. I do. So watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> you know where we are. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for having me, G. It's such a lovely space to chat like everything, Mum. It's just amazing. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Speak soon. Yeah, see you later.